For the very first time since announcing plans to move the Capitals and Wizards from downtown D.C. to Virginia, team owner Ted Leons has answered questions about the move. Lots of questions for him. The deal, which was made public, it only was in December. It feels like it was so much longer than that. It sparked both criticism and celebration. Leons has sat down with our News 4's Mark Seagraves to talk about a number of topics, including traffic concerns, how much crime played a role in their decision to leave downtown, and how the move will impact local businesses. Plus, a look at Leontes' legacy here in the DMV. So, you know, people have asked, do we have an issue with the city? No. I wish we communicated better. I left our building the other night, last game. Sixth Street was closed. I said, in most other communities, if there's going to be construction or there's an issue, you tell the team and they put it on the screen and they go, 6th Street is closed, take an alternate route. You know, traffic, I came K Street the other day in the morning and I was shocked at why is there so much traffic? Well, the lights aren't synced. That should be an easy fix. Look outside, there's a wooden outdoor eatery that just showed up one day. It stood up. If you look at it, it looks like someone went to a lumber store and built it. Oh, it's right across the street from where our trucks and the buses come in and out. It's in the way now, and people are parked there and having to make the U-turn to go into the parking. Um, you go, won't it be great when we don't have those kinds of issues? So the challenges that the city have and the challenges that flow down to us is the coordination of federal, local, city council, and I won't have that out in Virginia. Traffic is a top concern for residents who live near Potomac Yard and fans who need to drive to the proposed arena. A financial study produced for the Virginia governor's office and obtained by News 4 says the arena complex could host more than 300 events a year. And a transportation study released last week for the city of Alexandria projects that more than half of all the fans will arrive to the complex by car. The games themselves, right, um, most of them are on weekends and Fridays, right? I mean, you saw the study, it's like 40 nights for those two games. And concerts, those are fantastic, but concerts start eight, nine o'clock at night. So, you know, on the traffic thing, go, okay, well, let's be specific. When is the traffic heaviest? Five to seven o'clock. All right, so we got 40 nights that we have to deal with. And, and I'm not poo-pooing it, but I'm saying, let's get the data, let's get the facts. Boy, that problem is a lot smaller to solve and we have a lot of resources and a lot of time to fix it. How about crime? Did that factor into your decision at all? No, and, and I, w I want to be very straightforward here. Um, I think our mayor has the toughest job in leadership and government in the country. And I've told her, I know you will get this right, um, but it's become harder for you to fix it because of all of the things around. You know. One of the things I lived in fear of is a fan gets injured, a fan is robbed. I take that really, really personally, but I don't control the road to the parking lot five streets away. And that's what I would talk to the mayor about. And she understands. What do you say to DC residents who feel like you're abandoning. This, the teams have been here for so long, through good times and bad times, DC residents have supported the teams. <clears throat> what do you say to the, just the citizens who, who say they feel like they're being abandoned? I understand, and um, we're gonna be here for four or five more years, and the future is going to be fantastic, and we're three and a half miles away. I don't believe I'm abandoning DC. That's probably something that maybe I misunderstood. And I've been asked, well, what about the small business owners here? They're not my constituency. My constituency are our fans, the players, 
the employees, the union workers, and they're all going to benefit dramatically. I don't feel responsibility to those other businesses. I feel responsibility, as I said, to our fans, to our players, to our, our employees, and you know, to the neighborhood itself. You talk about that decision that Mr. Polo made to, to move into D.C. You know, he's remembered as a, as a great philanthropist, somebody who took a big risk on downtown, on this area, and really is the catalyst um, with his own money for what we enjoy now downtown. Are you concerned about your D.C. legacy? I mean, you went to Georgetown University. You've had D.C. in your DNA for a very long time. Are you concerned about what your D.C. legacy will be if you move the teams out? Um, Mr. Paul was a great man, and whatever his legacy is, he earned it, he deserved it, and I love the man. I'm going to build, though, the greatest building, the greatest sports community, because I've got the land and the room to do it. And then we're going to win more Stanley Cups, and we're going to win an NBA championship. That's how my legacy will be made. But you can't define what my legacy is on NBC. That's not, that's not for you to do. My legacy will be earned over a body of work, and I have zero concerns about what um, people think my legacy is right now for doing the right thing for my fans, for my players, for my employees. A wide-ranging conversation there. Um, you know what, there were a lot of different things that came out of that conversation, and I know that's not the end of what we will hear from Ted Leonsis, and mm -hmm. certainly we're also expecting to hear from D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser later this week on what he had to say, so we're looking forward to that.